Early Native American Life in South Carolina. Settle back and relax as we take a trip back in time to when no European people lived in South Carolina. Only Native Americans lived here then. You might come across tribes like the Cherokee, Catawba, and Yamasee. Tribes from South Carolina were different from one another in language, but in many ways were very much alike. The region in which one tribe lived may have made them different from others in what they ate, wore, or made. As we travel, let's start in the mountains of the Blue Ridge region. Here, we will come across the Cherokee Nation, also known as the Real People. They often lived along the rivers in many small villages that worked together. Councils ran the villages as a group of elected leaders. Even women were allowed to sit on the council. They made important decisions like whether or not to go to war with a neighboring tribe. If you take a closer look at the Cherokee villages, you will see they had two types of houses, one for the summer and one for the winter. In the summer, they lived in long houses, but in the winter, they lived in houses made of wattle and daub. Wattle are strips of wood held together by daub, which is wet sand, soil, clay, and animal poo mixed with straw. They also had to have two types of clothing, thick heavy ones for the cold wintry days and lighter ones for hot summers. Let's face it, you wouldn't want to wear shorts in the winter and heavy coats in the summer, would you? If you look, we are traveling in dugout canoes, which were trees cut down burnt out in the middle and then dug out to make a hollow area for people to sit in. There were no horses at this time and it is way before cars were invented. The Cherokee either had to paddle in a canoe or walk on foot. Which would you prefer? The Cherokee didn't keep to themselves. They actually had a trade route that went from mountains to the Atlantic Ocean. They would use this route to trade with other Native American tribes in South Carolina that lived in other regions. This is why today you might find Cherokee artifacts in regions where they did not live. What did these unique people eat, you might ask? If we take a closer look, we will see them hunting, gathering food in the woods, farming from the land, and fishing. Some of the food they may have eaten were deer, rabbits, bears, fish from the rivers, corn, pumpkins, and berries. If you lived in a Cherokee village, you would have a job as a child. Many children your age would have to keep the animals out of the crops that the adults were growing. Is this the kind of role you would like to have today? Think on that. Let's continue on our journey to visit the great nation of the Catawba, also known as the River People. Now, why do you think they were called this? Ponder on that a moment as we get our bearings. Have you come up with the answer yet? That's right, the Catawba lived along the rivers just like the Cherokee. We will need to leave the Blue Ridge and head to the Piedmont to see the Catawba. Remember, we are either walking or going by dugout canoe as there are no horses or cars at this time. They were most powerful around the Rock Hill area of our state. Once again, you will see that the Catawba share a likeness for the Cherokee in the types of clothes they wore. They had lighter clothes for the summer. 
and thicker, heavier clothes for the winter. The Catawba, as you see, didn't live in the same type of houses as the Cherokee. They lived in what's called wigwams, made of large poles bent over in a dome shape with bark and grasses strapped to them for walls. Just like the Cherokee, our Catawba tribe ruled themselves with a council. Even women in this tribe were allowed on the council to make decisions about their people. They were one of the more peaceful nations living in South Carolina, so their council probably voted not to go to war more often than they might vote for war. If we look a little more closely, we might spot someone making a treasured Catawba pottery. There is a lot of clay in the Piedmont region with which the Catawba used to make their pottery. You can still find remnants of these within our great state today. Just look around, dig in the ground, see what you can find. This great nation is also similar to the Cherokee and the foods they ate. You should be able to see the Catawba hunting, gathering food in the woods, farming from the land, and fishing. Meaning foods they ate may have been deer, rabbits, bear, fish from the rivers, corn, pumpkins, and berries, just like the Cherokee had. As we continue down the river in our dugout canoe, we will head over to the coastal zone near the Georgia border. Here lives the tribe of the Yamasee. In some ways they are like the Catawba and the Cherokee, and in others they are very different. During the warm summer months, the Yamasee lived in wigwams like the Catawba, but they built them on the beach near the ocean, and the trees they used were the palmetto trees that grow along the coast. During the cooler months, the Yamasee moved more inland to get away from the cold ocean breeze and built wattle and daub houses like the Cherokee along the rivers. Because they lived in a warmer area, they only wore lighter weight clothing for warmer weather. They didn't need heavier, thicker clothes like the Cherokee and Catawba did in the winter. The Yamasee, like the Cherokee and Catawba, hunted, gathered food in the woods, and farmed from the land. However, their fishing was a little different as they were able to catch fish from the Atlantic Ocean as well as gathered clams and oysters from the beaches in the coastal zone. They also used the shells from these oysters and clams to trade with other Native Americans. The Yamasee also ruled themselves by a council made up of elected members, including women. I hope we don't see any tribes going to war as we conclude our journey back in time while visiting the great nations of South Carolina. I hope you have enjoyed your time with me and didn't get too tired sitting in our dugout canoe. <laughs>